So we purchased this, and in my testing of this, I found that certain MADI connections on this device don't actually pass audio. So I have a suspicion that inside there is some corrosion uh, because that's what happened on this puppy. So I suspect that it's the same issue happening on this one. And I wanted to show you guys how I end up going in and cleaning out uh, one of these units. This is really good maintenance for any type of gear that you have. If there's dust or any buildup on the PCB, that dust or buildup can actually um, be an electrical conduit and cause things to just not work. And so let me show you how I figured out what it is that's happening. So I have my handy dandy Behringer CT100, which is just a tone or um, it's a cable checker. So what we're doing is we're sending out a test tone at positive four out of this XLR. So all I'm doing is just going and plugging it in to the front of the stage rack. So this is the stage rack. This is the input section of this console. So this ends up being back house. That's at front of house and all of my inputs go into this. And so as I'm going through here, I've been checking all of these and all of them have signal. And so then we have our MADI portion. So this stage rack allows me to take all 64 inputs, put them over a MADI out, and then this MADI out is going to this Dante device, which is a RedNet 6, which converts um, my MADI to Dante, which then gives me all 64 channels of Dante at 48 kilohertz, um, allows me to put that to a Dante recorder that we have for multi-tracking. I am aware that this can do multi-tracking through AVB, but we want to have a backup. So as I'm checking this, we can see here, uh, this is a RedNet software and here's all the inputs. And as I change this, I'm going to go ahead and plug this tone into input one. There it is. Input two is right there and three is there. And so I was going down all of them. Here's nine and then 17. Uh, is right here. Yep, and then we go to 25 and nothing. 26, nothing. 27, nothing. Uh, but I'm getting signal here, so I know that it's working here, but then I go and plug it into here and we have it on 33. This is the same thing that was happening on my other unit. So I suspect that there is something happening with the MADI chip on 25 through 32. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna take this guy out of the rack, uh, take power off, and I'm gonna, un I'm, I'm gonna open up the case and I'm gonna clean off the PCB board, put it back together, plug it back in, and see if that fixes it. So here's the time lapse. Okay, here is the Focusrite RedNet 6, and I have this thing taken apart. Yes, if you end up taking these things apart, you can void warranties. Um, this is purchased used, and so it does not carry a warranty anymore. So when you're opening up a piece of gear and trying to figure out what's wrong with it, you really are just guessing at how the unit is working. This one is actually pretty clear about which is the Matty part and which is the Dante part. So this, is the Dante card. This is uh, labeled the Brooklyn uh, 2 from Dante. And so this is the Dante card of this uh, specific thing. And any, any Dante device is going to have a Dante card within it um, that's just interfacing the main motherboard with the Dante card. But every, every Dante device that you'll end up purchasing has a Dante card like this in a slot similar to this. Um, so if you ever have a Dante card go bad, you can swap these. Um, so little note. Um, but this is a MADI to Dante converter. So this is the MADI bridge. And what I see is there is corrosion all over this connection. This is like some sort of residue. You can kind of scratch it off. And like if I really get in there, I can kind of move it across. Um, on the other one that I had, there was a little bit of corrosion on one of these chips on some of the leads. And so I'm interested to see if there is any. And I'm not, I'm not seeing any. So the main corrosion that I am finding is 
here. You can see it. And so all of that can end up making connections. Depending on what type of corrosion that is, that can make connections and cause electrical contacts to be connected in certain ways. Same with over here. You know, we have this corrosion that's here and some corrosion in, in some of these little resistors and whatnot. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take this board out and I'm gonna clean it. Let me show you what I'm gonna clean it with. All right, so the electrical cleaner that I use is by Sprayon. It is EL2302. It is an electrical contact cleaner. And the way that this works is you just spray it on electrical contacts and it cleans them. Now, I bet you're wondering why am I doing this instead of using canned air and blah, blah, blah. And what's cool about this is it is safe for printed circuits, cameras, vacuum tube parts, relays, switches, precision instruments, coin counters, chutes. This is my favorite, hydraulic and missile fuel systems satellite communication equipment. I'm pretty sure that this thing is safe to use on this, which it is. So this is fast drying and it does not have any, it does not uh, conduct electricity. Um, so this is safe to spray on these. Now, why am I not using compressed air? Well, canned air is in a frozen form and if it sprays out on some of these IC chips, it can actually crack the casing. So I never suggest using canned air on electronics. Why am I not using a vacuum, you ask? Well, vacuums create a static charge at the tip of it, which means that if you ended up vacuuming this off with a vacuum, you can create a static electricity charge and shock and fry your board, which is also bad. So I'm going to end up showing you the way that I do this. I know that some of you are going to think it's wrong. It's been the way that I have cleaned amplifiers and electronic products for years, and I've never had an issue. So right now I'm just going to take this thing apart and then I'm actually gonna spray that. So here we go. Okay, so the way you use this, you open it up, there is a straw on the side, which you need to get out. All right, there we go. So you get your straw out, there's a hole, you put this straw through, and then you are ready to spray. So we have the PCB board. I do this above a trash can because uh, it's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to liberally spray this over the entire PCB, cleaning all of the electrical contacts. I am going to first focus on this area here and then this area here as that's where the visible um, gunk is on currently. So I'm going to do that right now. So all I'm going to do is just hold this over the trash can and I'm going to spray. So you can choose to do little spurts or you can just go to town with it. So. Okay, does have a little bit of a smell. Luckily it is non-ozone depleting, but what we can see is already all of that corrosion that was here is cleaned off. And that's what this is made for, is that it's supposed to take off all this corrosion and electrical contact cleaner to clean off these electrical contacts. So we can compare this side to this side. And even on this little GoPro, we can see, even though it's not focused, uh, we can see that there's less corrosion on this side, there's none, where there is a bunch on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out cleaning this thing. So usually uh, I will grab a shirt or a microfiber cloth and I will just pat this down. I'll shake it off and I'll just take this and I will lightly pat it dry. But this is safe uh, to use on these circuits. And then on this side, we're just gonna do the same thing, just patting it down. On this side, got to be a little bit more gentle as all the components are on this side, but they are all a surface mount, so I don't have the risk of bending anything. So I'm going to now set this adjacent to dry 
fully before I install it back in. So I'm gonna set this to dry for 15, 20 minutes, come check on it and see how it's doing. So we'll check back in a second. Fixed it. Worked? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Dude, that stuff is magic though. I've I've taken amps that have complete static when you turn them on and like don't even work. Sprayed it and it came back just fine. Isn't that crazy? All right, so we have the unit back in, uh, in line. We have power, Dante is working, Maddie is connected into it. I've actually just gone through with the test generator um, with my little Behringer thing here. Uh, gone through every single input and we are good. So if you remember uh, before cleaning it, 25 through 32 did not work. Uh, but all the rest of them did. So if I put tone in on channel one, we would see it there. And here is channel nine, which we see, 17, which we see, and now 25, we see it. And 26, we see it. And 27, we see it. So the corrosion that was in this guy, we were able to clean off with this and now it works. So whenever you have gear that you purchase used, make sure you double check it before you actually put it in line with stuff. Um, as I had both of these red nets have the same issue, but on different inputs. So uh, this red net didn't allow any connections on um, 17 through 32. So it only showed one through 16. Um, and even when I had it in 48K mode, um, all the rest of the inputs were fine except 17 through 32. This specific one only had 25 through 32 that wasn't working. So uh, super interesting. Anyway, thank you so much. Hopefully this video was helpful. And uh, make sure to find this stuff. Spray on EL2302. We bought ours from Granger and uh, love it. Thanks so much.